Welcome to the Social Media Church Podcast. I am Neil Smith, and I'm joined by my co-host, Nick Runyon. Nick, welcome back to the podcast together. It is good to see you. It's been a while since we've been on here together. It has. You know, I feel like we've actually probably seen each other face-to-face a couple of times since the last time we've done even a podcast together. So we are still hanging out uh, <laughs> because we are real friends. We're not just internet friends. Uh, but we have great conversations uh, that, that we share here. And we've had some great conversations um, with some folks separate, uh, but glad to be together. And this episode of the podcast, we're having a conversation that you and I have had probably for a couple of years since we've known each other around some of these significant technology companies that are, are really maturing. And I think it's an interesting space, even as, as we see the government getting involved in regulation around technology. So we're talking about Google We're talking about Facebook and we're talking about Apple, uh, who are three leaders and and Amazon might fit into that world a little bit and uh, Twitter, you know, there's maybe a few others, but but those are probably the three biggest ones out there. And uh, you got to be a part of a conversation recently with all three of those companies. And so the question is, and and let's, before we can get into the event, I I want you to answer the question directly. Um, Is Google, is Facebook, is Apple, uh, and maybe I should not say is, are they friends of the church? So Nick, what is your direct answer to that question? Direct short answer is no, because now you're going to be surprised. That's not what I expected. I know. Yeah. Because these are, let's, let's talk about what they are. They are giant corporations. These are leaders in the technology space. And so I am not going to say that these companies are operating in such a way to be um, maybe even like friends with anybody, right? They, They kind of have their own mission and that's what they're focused on. And that's what makes them great. See, I would totally disagree with you if I can. Sorry to cut you off. I believe the opposite, that their mission is different from the church, but their mission directly aligns with the church. Facebook's mission to connect the world, right? Build health, build better communities. Does that not yeah. align with the mission oh. of the church? Apple is creating great software and hardware. Does that not, not, not align? Now, I would, I would push back on the other side, and we're <laughs> going to get into this practically, that there are people that work for these companies that are enemies of the church. Maybe, maybe don't have our interest. Maybe we'd sure. rather the church go away. Uh, sure. We also know that there's people at those companies that would want the church to thrive. Uh, but the company as a whole, uh, as, as a core entity, is it a friend of the church? I say yes, you say no. It's what makes this a great conversation. <laughs> well, I say no because I don't, I'm not under no illusions that the decision makers in these companies are sitting there thinking about how can my, uh, how can our decisions impact um, XYZ industry, church, faith based, nonprofits, uh, government. I think they, they're very user focused and I think that's what makes them great. Yes. And a common refrain in, when you get into conversations with people from these companies is, um, it's something that uh, my old boss used to say all the time. He's like data trumps opinion every time. And I love that. Mm-hmm. And it's true. And I wish actually, I wish some of our teams operated more along those lines, like be true to the data, measure it well. And then it doesn't really matter what I think. What's the data telling me? about how's that informing our decisions. They are very good at that. And you already alluded to it. There are people in these organizations that love Jesus very much. And are they friends of the church? Absolutely. And it was some of those friends that invited us into this conversation recently, and we were just privileged to be there. But one of the things that I heard them say is something that I've told other teams and other ministries all the time, because it's easy to say, all these Silicon Valley companies, Silicon Valley, it's super, you know, liberal politically, it's anti-Christian. That might be true. I mean, that's kind of the frame refrain there, but there are Christians at high levels in every one of these organizations that love Jesus very much and are using their influence and position to do both things, to both advance the mission of their organization and also advance the purpose of the gospel. And that I think is a beautiful thing. So in that respect, yes, they are friends. It's, that's good. That, it's, that's thoughtful. I, I'm eager to, I, I want to push back on, because I love a good uh, debate, but we don't need to dig into it. I think the data 
should most of the time trump opinion. I think there's times where opinion should actually trump data. Uh, that I, I, I get into the nuances. Uh, we, we could debate that. We're not going to debate that today. Uh, but, but I love the dialogue, and there's no doubt. And I, I remember going to the, the, um, one of the first times I went to Life Church, Alan George telling me uh, that, that one of the things he learned right away is that one of the things they, they cling to at Life Church is data has a seat at the table. And yeah. churches that are now prioritizing data, um, and it's not just obsessing over numbers, uh, but, but really just finding measures of ministry impact and success uh, to be more, more effective. It's, it's just, it's awesome. I, and I love that. No doubt data should have ministry table. I think opinions, though, also have a seat at the table. Well, uh, opin- opinion, not- opinion and mission obviously have a seat at the table. There are times where I've been in missions organizations where it's like, we're going to do this because we feel led to do this yes. and you know that that type of thing yes and um, you weren't stating your opinion you were saying somebody else's uh to to be clear uh that they that they said you know uh data i don't know i don't remember exactly the quote you no, said even a minute ago i default to data trump's opinion every time so um but it's in the context of mission yes oh that's good so i mean i can i can be persuaded but uh so let's let's talk though. You texted me this weekend. You mm. you do this to me often, Nick. Of hey, can you be here tomorrow? And <laughs> and, I, and you, I've had so many uncomfortable conversations with my. Uh, that shouldn't I stretch. I have had so many like like requesting of my wife. Can I get on a plane tomorrow because of calls that I get from you that are like, <laughs> hey, I'm hanging out with. Apple, Facebook, and Google, can you be here tomorrow uh, on, in another part of the country? And so you were hanging out with these groups um, this weekend, and uh, you basically got the call like three days before, it sounds like, right. or shortly before. Yeah. Uh, I got the call 12 hours before. Um, and I should have I, I immediately texted you. I'm sorry. I apologize. It hurts my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to get on that plane anyway. Uh, I just, I love the interactions that we have where, uh, it will, it will just, Hey, by the way, uh, you have a once in a lifetime opportunity. You can either take advantage of it or miss it. Uh, and I too often have to miss it. But, um, so tell me what, I, I don't know how much you can share. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to put it out there, but what, what exactly went down and what, uh, and then let's dig into what, what happened as those people were at a table with the church. Yeah, so this is um, really interesting, kind of how this all came about. So one of the fastest growing churches in America um, is, you know, there's a woman at that church that works for a person in a senior position at one of these companies. And just through networking and friendship, um, put this meeting together, which I think is beautiful. That's a wonderful thing. Um, A couple of our friends that we've you know, really developed, I think, strong relationships with over the last um, couple of years have, uh, they're the ones that pulled us into this. And um, so like my friend Christy uh, leads the employees, uh, the Christian employee group at Facebook, strong believer, um, super encouraging uh, young woman, and is just excited to see people using the tools, the products that they develop all day long um, for something that she really cares about. And in this case, it aligns perfectly with Facebook's mission of building meaningful engagement. Yeah. And, you know, we, we interviewed Nona on uh, this podcast, yeah. Nona yeah. Jones with Facebook, who is tasked with helping to um, catalyze and start uh, Facebook groups among uh, uh, churches, you know, and religious organizations. So this is, this is the confluence of like product and strategy and mission. And, they were invited into this conversation with this church and they said, Hey, if you guys, I know it's super late notice, but if you can be there, we'd love to have you just kind of share your experience. So what was interesting in the room was you had a church asking questions like, uh, here's our mission. We want to reach our community. We want to do good work. We want to share the gospel. How do we use the tools that you are, you all are building in order to do that better. And then we were kind of in this interesting position of being able to say, we have a lot of understanding about those tools. We kind of understand, we're not a church, but we kind of understand what you're trying to do. Yeah. And you've heard me say before, I love just giving away whatever it is that we've learned to help others improve as well. And so that's, that was really the exciting piece for us is to just come in and say, Hey, here's, here's a few ideas to think about. And um, 
but it was a it was a great encouraging like iron sharpening iron conversation with some some of the world's top tech thinkers one of the fastest growing churches in the country and it was all uh, for the glory of god which is amazing uh, I, I love that i love to that a uh that that a church was in many ways humble enough to say we believe that there are some voices that can speak into to us organizationally uh to help us get better um and, and so i'm uh, I'm familiar with, with this particular church and, and the incredible, unique, innovative things that the, the ministry that they're doing. And, and then, uh, I, you know, I think back to when I was at Community Bible Church, one of the, one of the most, the fastest growing, largest companies in San Antonio was Rackspace. And uh, Rackspace had a history of being known as the largest host of pornography on the internet. Uh, that, mm, that's what yeah. many people correlated Rackspace to especially in their early days and, and, and their, their chief uh, culture officer, their uh, culture czar, I think was his official title uh, is, is who I, I connected with relationally. And I told Robert Emmett, our senior pastor said, Hey, he invited us to come just hang out at Rackspace for a couple hours. Would you be interested? And he said, heck yeah. And we're bringing our entire executive team and we're going to go hang out at Rackspace. We're going to slide down their slide and, uh, and talk to him. And it, it was one of the most shaping times in the relationship that was formed, even between our church and their company, because we went and spent 10 hours or two hours with them uh, was incredible. And so I loved hearing that. Uh, I'm eager to hear specifically what, what were some of the conversations that, that were had between a local church and companies like that? Um, it was, it was fun to, um, just to see kind of what they've developed so far. And they have a big focus on um, leveraging their church and their tools to motivate people to go, yeah. which, um, which is great. And these, these yeah. tools that Google, Facebook, and others are developing, you know, really work um, to accomplish that. Yeah. But we were able to get some insights and, um, you know, I've heard some of this before and other similar conversations with um, some of these companies, but like, talking about like brand in particular. Um, so there's a whole industry around brand and church marketing and those things are important for building community. But also when we think about going outside of our walls, um, there was a conversation just about what are the things that really go viral and the things that go viral don't often have a brand attached to them. Yeah. They're much more about mission. They're much more about purpose. Yeah. And I think if we, like if I step back and I say, okay, my church, I know it's got a branding pack just because I'm familiar with this stuff and I yeah. see kind of how consistent it is. It looks good. It's done with excellence. Yeah. Probably anybody outside of our church doesn't know the name of our church, doesn't know the name of our pastor, who doesn't know. I mean, you know, some would, but on a large yeah. scale, yeah, that's not the thing that really wins the day. Yeah. I think it, it's the heart and it's the mission and it's the people that are carrying that forward. And so talking about strategies to use these tools to equip your people to yep. carry that message out. Yep. Um, another thing was just really the importance of relationship. Yep. Um, I think at every level, actually. Relationship is what brought that room together. Um, relationship is what will carry those conversations forward. But also personal relationships among the members of the church with one another, mm -hmm. but also with others in their circles of influence in the community. Yes. So how can we um, really address the needs of people in our communities by both equipping and sending releasing our people who already have those pre-existing relationships with those we're trying to reach? Um, how can you support that work to help them be successful really kind of in their own walk in their own Christianity? Yeah. Interesting. I, you know, what my, what I'm, what I'm hearing in this is I was looking for, well, Facebook said if you used Facebook groups and you'd use some advertising and you use this, you know, platform. Uh, and, and what I heard is people connected with people. Uh, I'm sure there was some strategy talk, but sure. um, w as, as we consider is Facebook, is Apple, is, uh, you know, th these companies, uh, Google, are they friends of the church? Well, the best way to find out is to build a relationship with them. Uh, yeah. but, but by making assumptions uh, that they're an enemy of the church, which is what I think the church's stance has been for years, you, we're, we're going to naturally villainize them um, without even getting to know them. And so what I heard is 
a relationship was formed, whether they become friends of the church or not is maybe to be defined. Uh, but at, at the core, the church is building a relationship with individuals there. Individuals are building a relationship with the church. Um, and if there is a partnership opportunity, it starts with a relationship. And uh, what a beautiful start to that, that interaction. I think in terms of tactics and, and things like that, it's important. So where we started was, or where I started, you didn't agree, but these organizations <laughs> exist to serve their users. You know, a lot of them have a user focus. Yes. If I understand what the motivation of a Google, uh, a company like Google is, yes. so they want to offer, um, they want to, you know, index the world of information and offer me the answer to whatever question I'm searching for in the moment that I'm searching for it. Yes. Um, they've done a lot of writing and stuff about the zero moment. So like I Google it, like I don't even think about uh, Bing, <laughs> you know, I just go to Google. Yeah. Um, how can, if I'm trying to present the truth, how can I, how can other churches um, structure our offering of truth in such a way that fits into Google's mission statement and their definition of success? Yeah. You know, so if I have a page that has an excellent customer experience, it has fast load time, it's indexed well, I've got strong SEO, and the ads that I'm running offer a good user experience with a high quality score. Uh, and if, if I'm talking in words that you don't understand and you're in marketing, just go to like Google's learning center. And that's what I love about these companies is yeah. they say, here's what we're trying to do. Here's how you can be better at it. Mm. And so really the kind of the tactical things to some extent are like follow the instructions, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and then what, what can we, how can we follow the instructions? How can we like build those landing pages in such a way that offer like a better user experience or prioritize those things so that when somebody's searching for an answer to a spiritual question, the truth of the gospel that we're presenting is delivered to them through a trusted resource like Google, which they're already using. Yeah. So from, from a tactical standpoint, a little bit of it is, you know, um, unremarkable a little bit. Cause it's like, just do what we say you should do, you know, build yeah. a Facebook group, yeah. Um, to not be like pitching your thing all the time, but to really build community and, yes. um, through the community that's built there and the high engagement, you're going to get more people involved, you know, which is accomplished. Yeah. So, um, interesting. So maybe, maybe if I could, if I could interrupt you for a minute as, yeah, as yeah. I'm processing what you're sharing, do you think maybe some of where the church misses it when it comes to effective relationship or partnership? with these companies or these technologies is how we approach them. And, and I say that to say that, what if, are, are we maybe seeing them of Facebook, what can you do for me? And Apple, what can you do for me? And, and maybe we should approach it as Facebook, you've got a great community. How can I better serve your community? Or Apple, you've got a lot of users. How can, how can we better serve your users? Because they're, they're focused on their, their customers uh, they're not necessarily fun focused on us as an organization. Do you think some of it is the approach that, that maybe church leaders should shift in their mindset? It's really, it's interesting because like, I don't think of Facebook's users as their community. Like it's their users, Yeah. but they've done such a great job of saying that it's my community and like, it's a tool that they've built for me to engage my community. Yeah. And I've bought into it like, you know, hook, line and sinker. Yeah. Um, I'd say the same is true with, you know, Apple, Google, both software and hardware. I mean, yeah. it's, I think these, these people, uh, these organizations are building platforms and a pl the definition of a platform, it's, it's so often uh, used incorrectly, but a platform is something to where I can build other services and things on top of it. Yeah. So I can on their platform, I, I do have an opportunity to define who's my community, what's my mission and how do I want to achieve that? Yep. And, um, and so I think that, I mean, you started your question with what are churches doing wrong? Yeah. Um, I think that we've got an opportunity as the church and there's a number of reasons why this is difficult to do, but I think really releasing our people releasing our existing community into some of these platforms to engage people in ministry on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I think so mm -hmm. often the church is like the church organization is working through programming or other means to go out into the community. Those are good things. Yeah. Um, 
These platforms are materially different though. They're designed for a one-on-one -on -one connection. Yeah. And when you match that one-on-one -on -one digital capability with local proximity, I think some interesting things really start to happen. You know, like a Facebook closed group of, uh, or maybe a Facebook open group of your church, but within that you have nested closed groups that are representing Bible studies or basically week long engagement, um, you know, 160 plus hours a week of engagement yeah. with my church community in a digital space. Yeah online and offline blending together. You know, I think releasing people into those platforms to operate in ministry that way and carry the gospel, I think is a, yeah. is a big opportunity that still exists. Interesting. Interesting. It's, you know, it's, it's interesting because we talk social media here and, and Facebook, Facebook's mission is so, I, in my mind, it's so aligned to the mission of the church. Yeah. Apple, I agree. Apple's is, and, and Google's are, are pretty different. And Google, it's interesting you even d said search because I, I don't, I question how much of what they do is still search. Now, obviously YouTube, big part of search, Google's a big part of search, but they, they're involved in so many different things now. Data storage, Google Drive, I mean, uh, Gmail, now search is still, I mean, it's interesting as a, as a platform, how they have developed. And then Apple is its own unique in, in uh, infrastructure we're um you know anyways uh, I, <laughs> there's some tangents of what i'm dealing with with some clients around podcasts right now of of what's being ha what's happening behind the scenes around their podcast engine and network and and it's a lot of the same thing that people have exp expressed concerns with with facebook when it comes to suppression whether that's ministry related suppression or whether that's just because the algorithm changed and you're having to adjust and so just frustrations right. with maturation of a, of a platform like that um, it's, it's so complicated. And I, I think what I'm, what I am struggling with in this conversation is how I even perceive Google and Facebook and Apple as companies and how, uh, how I've maybe I just not even correlated them relationally to the church historically. And I feel like I've argued with church leaders of, because to me, I feel like most church leaders that, that I've talked to have just villainized these companies of kids are spending too much time on their screens. Social media is destroying relationships. Uh, all of the negative things I've been like, no, 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 these technologies are good. But I don't, I don't know that I've ever even correlated the companies uh, as uh, entities themselves. And, and you're kind of almost saying it's, it's not, I don't, I don't know. It's I'm processing this and, and having a hard time uh, even soaking it in. I'm curious, Nick, maybe as you walked away from the weekend or the day in those conversations, what was the core takeaway uh, as, as you kind of went home and processed it? Uh, what, what do you think maybe even is the action item that churches should, should understand when it comes to, are these companies our friends or our enemies? So um, I don't think there are enemies. I think they're a passive player, you know, and I don't think, cause an enemy is actively working against you and I don't think that's happening. Yeah. Um, but a friend is actively helping you to win. And I also don't think that's happening, which is, sure. but there are advocates within these companies that are helping us win. Yes. So that, and that's an important, I think, distinction. So some, some of my big takeaways were um, measurement is good. So data yeah, is good. good and um, data has a seat at the table. And so the KPIs, the key performance indicators that we should avoid are the passive things. I think the KPIs that lead to growth are things like- uh, can, can, you, can, you, can I pause you real quick? What, what, would yeah. you, what would you define as a passive thing? So, well, different pieces. So this, this one's messy, but like yeah. church attendance. Yeah. So uh, what, is, what is an attendance? And especially if you have like an online service. And so if I've got in church, I've got online, I've got some percentage of those two uh, populations blending where they're choosing to kind of all stay at home this week. How do you measure attendance? Yeah. And is it key towards accomplishing your main goal? Yeah. So I think defining the main goal. So like if your main goal is community that engages people that are far from God. Yeah. Um, 
how does something like church attendance online or offline uh, impact that? Yeah. I'm not saying that it doesn't. I'm saying that it might. Uh, I'm also suggesting that there might be other things that are more key toward to, to measure whenever we're trying to find out if our community is engaging those, you know, in our cities that are far from yeah. God. Yeah. And so um, those are, those are hard things with, you know, church leadership teams that, that they really need to think through. Um, and I think also we have to be honest uh, that the lead pastor, the senior pastor kind of holds the keys to that door and, mm-hmm. you know, in saying this thing is most important or not. Yeah. And so um, this isn't the case with the church that we were attending. Um, I don't know where they stand on this actually, but yeah. uh, you have to get the senior leadership, not only to define, you know, our vision and strategy, but also to define and commit to how are we going to measure those things? Yes. And so like, otherwise data at the table is just kind of noisy. Yes. So, and that's, that's a, I understand all the difficulties in trying to do that, but, uh, I think that's, that's very important. Um, and just one other thing is, uh, something that we heard from Google, Facebook and Apple is that people want to follow people. Yes. You know, I think just back to that relational, that, that personal connection, these things, these devices that we use, they're cold, they're hard, they're metal. Um, but they connect us with people which are warm and loving and carry the gospel. And, uh, I think, I think that's an important thing to, to consider. We get massive engagement when it's people connecting with people. Interesting. That's, that's natural, but it's, it's often, um, we don't, we don't intuitively understand that, but it, when we think about it, it, it's just com- seems to be common sense. Well, Nick, I am, uh, I'm always fascinated having conversations. I, I get, I'm so pumped that you have a seat at, you had a seat at that table um, and that you brought us into that conversation as well. Um, b- because that's, that's not, that's not a conversation that happens every day. Uh, and I think that's a convers that's not a conversation that might've ever even happened up until this last week. Um, and, and, and I think it's in some ways historic uh, uh, that that conversation happened uh, that, that you are part of it. I think it's hopefully a conver- co- a first conversation of many um, and I'm excited. And, and so it's, my mind is uh, we're going to maybe have to have a, a follow up to this conversation as we uh, I could see like three months from now saying the exact same conversation is Google, Facebook and Apple friends with the church uh, in reprocessing that I, I will say, Nick, we debated about it at the beginning. We, we've met our initial opinions. I have changed my, my opinion uh, oh. from definitive to vague. You know, you've moved <laughs> to the gray zone. Uh, they, it doesn't really matter if they're friends or not. Uh, they're, they don't need, they're not, they're not, they're neutral um, yeah. in, in that. And that but, logic. But people sense. matter. So you, people engage with people. Bottom line. People are friends with people. People are friends with people. Remember that. Um, <laughs> That's good. That's good. Well, Nick, thanks for, thanks for sharing your insights. Uh, thank you, Apple, and thank you, Facebook, and thank you, Google, for the work you do uh, and the platforms uh, that you provide and the ministry opportunities that you provide. Um, and we are glad to maybe be your friends. And so thank you to everyone for listening to this episode of the Social Media Church Podcast. Uh, go to socialmedia.church for the show notes. Uh, make sure to rate or review uh, this podcast if you haven't already on iTunes or wherever it is that you're listening. We appreciate you being a part of the Social Media Church community.